So you're getting ready to go to the Bahamas, and you know you need to fill out some paperwork. But how exactly do you go about it? Hi, I'm Nika Waters, and welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Today I'm talking about the Bahamas cruising permit and some details you might want to be aware of when you're filling out that online form. Today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Lunatech, makers of the hydration spray bottle, odor-free dishcloth, and self-cleaning washcloth. Lunatech offers practical gear designed to save water and reduce waste. A water bottle that doubles as a garden hose? A dish rag that doesn't get stinky? Yes, please! Visit lunatechgear.com to learn more. Use code BOATGALLEY to save 10% on everything. Lunatech. Innovative gear for your outdoor adventures. And the Lunatech gear comes in serious handy when you're cruising the Bahamas, for sure. Definitely. That hydration spray bottle... And the non-stinky dishcloth, fantastic additions to any Bahamas cruise. But in order to have that Bahamas cruise, you've got to fill out the Bahamas cruising permit. So what are some of those details to be aware of? As a note, there is a link to the blog post on this in the show notes. And the blog post is really, really detailed, including a whole lot of screenshots that show you exactly what you're going to see when you go to the website. So it's probably worth checking out as you're getting ready to fill out your form. A few things to think about or to know about with the Bahamas cruising permit. It is online. You're going to fill it out online. It's a form called Click to Clear, but you can't find it easily if you just Google Click to Clear. Instead, you want to go through the Bahamas Customs Government website, and there is a link to the cruising permit page in the show notes. The last time we cleared into the Bahamas, there was no online anything. You just appeared at the official port of entry with your passports, your boat papers, and your cash, and there was no online anything. Now we're in 2023 and things are a little bit different. So what are some things that you should be aware of as you're filling out your Bahamas online cruising permit? And by the way, if you don't do this ahead of time, you will be required to do it on a computer when you get to customs anyway. And as far as I understand, some places might charge you an additional fee to do it in the office right there. So it's really better to do it ahead of time. A couple things. Definitely do this on your computer. It does not work as well on a phone or a pad. It's not so tough if you need to go in and make tiny little tweaks, but it's definitely not mobile friendly. The website is not mobile friendly. You want to have your vessel documentation paperwork, your passports, any pet permit or weapons license or anything else that you need with you because you will be asked to provide information from those documents, but also you're going to be asked to provide pictures of those documents and upload them. And to pay for it, having a credit card on hand is definitely good too. You can start the process and pause so you don't have to get everything done all at once, although Once you get started, you definitely need to write down that number so you can find your paperwork again. Probably best to fill this out, at least the details, fairly close to when you're going to head to the Bahamas. If your dates of entry or entry port change because weather comes up, things change, you may have to change where you're going and when you're getting there, Don't worry that much about it. You can change those things on your online application. They'll print it out at the office and sign it. If you've made a change from what was in there initially, you will have to go make the changes online before it gets printed out. As a general note, this form is really intended for commercial vessels. So some of the things that they ask for are not applicable. Don't stress about it. So what are some of the tweaks and some of the challengers or some of the maybe little things that might trip you up as you're filling this out? For starters, it's getting to the website itself. The first time you get there, you're going to see something that says log in. And you may think, oh, I need to create an account to log in. But no, there's a little tiny little thing that says apply for a cruising permit. And you just click that. You don't have to log in first. Once you get there, you're going to get to a page that looks a little strange. But if you look on the left-hand side, there is a Pleasure Craft drop-down. Go to the left side, click on Pleasure Craft 
details and you will start to get to a form that you can start filling out. There are six sections to the whole form and I'll walk you through some of the details that are in there. Another general note, almost any box that has a drop down, like a little down arrow, will also allow you to start typing it and then it will limit the drop down options as you go along. So rather than just hitting the drop down down arrow, like for country of origin and having to scroll all the way down to wherever yours is because it starts at Albania or something, start typing in your country of origin or your last port of call and it will then limit what the options are and you can choose from there. So that's just a little hint. So sections of the Bahamas cruising permit. The first section is the header. You have to fill this out before you can get to any other parts of the form. And this is general details about the boat, the cruising plans. It asks for when you're going to get in, where you'll clear in, how long you're staying, where you're coming from, where you're going. The dates that are on this header are used to calculate the cruising permit fee. If you've miscalculated in terms of the calendar and you only want a 90 day permit and it spits out what is clearly a 12 month permit at the end of it, you can go back and change the dates in the header but you have to fill out the header first, at least initially, even if you're going to edit it, before you can continue on. Before you exit out of this page, and before you move on to the next one, write down the PCR registration number. And PCR has nothing to do with COVID testing. It's the pleasure craft registration, possibly, is what PCR might stand for, registration number. A little box will pop up to remind you and you write down the whole thing including the letters PCR dash whatever your particular number is because that's how you will be able to find your cruising permit information again and it's also how the office will be able to access your cruising permit information. The header is just general details about the boat and cruising plans. The next section is the maritime declaration. And this is really a section mostly for commercial vessels, um, especially the adder for ports of call. There's a whole drop down menu for ports of call where they say, please let me know every place you've been and every place you're going. If you're coming from the States, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If I had been coming from the Caribbean where I'd spent the last year in 12 different places, I might fill those ports of call out. But Again, this is mostly for commercial vessels. The next section is vessel details, where you will fill out all the particulars, specifics about your boat. You are a pleasure craft, unless you're a charter boat or a research vessel. The home port section is, unfortunately, it's a drop down one with no way that I could find to add my own unusual home port. So I typed in my home port, got as close as I could, and I picked that one. There's a section in here called registration certificate derating. And I believe that's a commercial vessel thing. I left it blank and nobody asked us any questions about that. The next section is a crew passenger list. In order to be able to create the records that you need, you will need to click the plus button. There's a red plus button on the upper right hand side of this. You're going to have to click that to be able to get to a form that lets you add the people and their passport numbers and what have you. Unless you are a charter boat, you do not have passengers aboard because that would put you into, co into a commercial category and not a pleasure craft. The next section is stores aboard. And really, this is specifically about pets weapons or the dinghy. We actually didn't think we needed to fill that all in and they asked us particularly about the dinghy. We needed to add the dinghy in when we got to Green Turtle to clear in and hadn't filled out the information about the dinghy. We had needed to go back in and fill that in before the cruising permit could be printed. Stores aboard, generally we're talking about ship stores. They're not interested in your 16 cans of tomatoes and two cans of pineapples and 10 pounds of pasta. If you're 
in doubt or wondering about it, if you hit the plus button on this particular page, you will come up with a nice helpful pop-up box. And that's a little, actually a little bit of an aside, is that one of the things that has been amazing with this form and filling out this form on online is that there actually are a lot of helpful pop-ups that give you some more information about the pages that you're filling out. So don't be shy about looking at that and using that as a way to help you out. The documents, that's where you're going to upload a photo of whatever documents you need to provide. And again, there will be a plus to, to add certain forms, but it will require you, it'll tell you what documents you need based on what you filled out on previous pages. So boat papers and passports and pet permits. We don't have a weapon on board, but if you did, I'm imagining you probably have to have a license for your weapons, that sort of thing. And then the summary is where they will give you the overview and the charges that you have to pay. So if you are thinking that you're only going for a three month for 90 days, and that's different than three months, if you are thinking that you're only going for 90 days and somehow the charges are popping up on that summary page as being indicative that you've somehow said you're going for 12 months, go back into the header section and mess with things a little bit until you get to that cost that is what you were expecting. And then after you're done with all of that, you get to go back and deal with payments back on that first page that looked like kind of nothing, but there's a payments slot atop of that. And you will access that by using the PCR number that you wrote down. As far as costs go, there are details on the Bahamas government site that's linked in the show notes for larger vessels. But for now, I'm just doing the up to 100 feet. So if your vessel is less than 34 feet long, and you're staying for three months, the cost is $150. If you're staying up to a year, the cost is $300. As a reminder, this is just for the boat. Immigration is a different issue. The immigration has no fees for it, but you're probably only going to get three months for immigration when you clear in, regardless of how long your cruising permit is for. So just be aware of that. If your vessel is from 34 to 99 feet and you're going for up to three months, it's $300. And if you're going for up to a year, it's $600. So those are the costs you can expect. A fishing permit is included with your cruising permit. In an ideal world, you'd probably print out the fishing permit part of it and get the official to sign it. But if not, technically, it's supposed to be a part of your cruising permit. So don't stress that much about it. Although all of the fishing regulations are on that online cruising permit. So just be aware if you're going to be fishing in the Bahamas, make sure you are aware of and paying attention to and following the regulations. They have details like sizes of catch, amount that you're allowed to carry, seasons for different kinds of fish, that sort of thing. So be aware of all that. Cruising the Bahamas is a spectacular way to get started or spend lots of time just enjoying yourself. And if you're worried about this or wanting to know some more details about cruising the Bahamas and some things to make your life much better when you're there, don't forget that the Boat Galley has a whole course on cruising the Bahamas. Check it out. If you're going to the Bahamas, you will not regret that choice. But I can't wait to share an anchorage with you somewhere in the Bahamas when we've filled out all this paperwork and it's behind us and instead we're able to toast to this incredible lifestyle that we get to share together. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. We're all about making boat life better. And we sure hope we've helped you do that today. Have the most spectacular week. Mm-hmm.